after more than five years of persevering and pursuing a research project in astronomy, I successfully defended my dissertation to become a PhD when I just turned 30. I had no idea that this would become a milestone marking many changes in my life. I'm Susie. Like and subscribe to the channel to listen to my story. Since the day I started going to school, I realized that I had a passion for studying and exploring everything, especially science. I could solve equations or read books all day without getting bored. This passion for studying helped me achieve many successes in competitions and always made my parents proud. But it also made people around me look at me differently. Some admire me, but some others made me as a weirdo. But until now, when I held my PhD in my hand, I suddenly feel empty inside. So, my youthful goal has become a reality. But are all of those worth what I had to sacrifice? Am I forgetting something else important? <sighs> I immediately removed all that thoughts like that from your head and quickly regained my spirit. My life is already tied to my passion for learning and scientific research. I have to strive harder to improve my academic standing, for this is the only way to happiness that I can take. I have received an invitation to be a teaching assistant at XXX College for the next six months. Not a famous college, huh? Have you thought this through, Susie? Yes, Dad. If I want to go higher education, I need to improve my pedagogical skills as well. XXX College is quite good for me now. But is it okay for you to be there all alone? You've never gone away from home for such a long time. May I come with you? It's no need, Mom. I can handle it. <laughs> I'm already 30. I'm not a kid anymore. After the following days, I said goodbye to my mom and dad and drove away on my own. It's the opposite of my mom's worries. I was very excited about this business trip because it was not only an opportunity for personal and career development, but also a chance for me to experience a completely independent life away from my family. Upon arriving at University XXX, I quickly completed some formalities and learned about the working procedures here. You will join me in the lesson tomorrow, Susie. Yes, Professor. You will be responsible for delivering this part of the lecture, Susie. With your abilities, I don't think there will be any difficulties. I will definitely try my best to do well. This is not the first time I've taught, but it is the first time I've stood in front of a large lecture hall at a college and in front of a students like this. I've heard that students at this college are quite mischievous, so I prepared my knowledge and mindset carefully to deal with any situation. Hopefully, in the first time, I will make a good impression on everyone. After Professor Kennedy finished her lecture and introduced me to all the students, I was quite nervous but tried to calm down to start my work. As I stepped out onto the podium, my two legs stumbled into each other, causing me to fall to the ground. Above the rows of students, there were bursts of <laughs> mocking laughter and whispers of gossip. Is she a PhD? She looks like a student. It's loss of face. She seems quite flustered and trembling too. It doesn't seem like she has a PhD. I know that we are lacking lecturers, but let someone pretend to be a PhD to teach us like this? I don't think so. Even I could do better than her. <laughs> I quickly got up to start. But the mocking laughs had thrown me off and messed up my preparation. I couldn't focus on delivering the lecture as planned and had to constantly refer to my notes because I kept forgetting things I had read. Fortunately, Professor Kennedy stepped in to help me complete the lecture. Until the end of the class, some boys even stayed behind to tease me. Excuse me, Miss Harrison? There are a few parts of the lecture that I didn't quite understand. Could I meet with you somewhere private to go over them again? <laughs> Yeah, me too. I'd also like some extra tutoring from you. What's the topic you're currently researching, Miss Harrison? Is it how stars are formed? If it is, then maybe I can help you with that. <laughs> Your pretty face doesn't really match the teaching job, Miss Harrison. If you want to find a more suitable job, just give me a call. The first time I encountered such a difficult situation, I blushed with embarrassment and quickly grabbed my materials and left. That day, 
Professor Kennedy called me in to provide further guidance on teaching skills and encouraged me a lot. However, <laughs> the rude and mocking remarks of those students continued to echo in my head, causing me to take several days to regain my composure. I returned to the lecture hall, brushed off the taunts, and continued with my work. Gradually, I gained control of my lectures, confidently using my knowledge and teaching abilities to gain recognition from everyone. After some time passed, Professor Kennedy suggested that I stand in my own on the lecture. No longer appearing as an assistant, the pressure was even greater than before, and it wasn't just limited to gossip anymore. If there are no more questions, we will move on to the next topic. Excuse me, Ms. Harrison, I still don't understand the first part of the previous lecture. Could you please explain it again? I don't understand it either. You spoke too fast, miss. Me too. We were all too busy staring at you, so we couldn't concentrate on the lesson. Haha. <laughs> <sighs> please be serious. All right, I will explain it again. Next time, please pay more attention to the lecture. Those students grinned and winked at each other. This wasn't the first time I had been deliberately challenged by students. In particular, there was a group of rebellious students in my class who always tried to interrupt or disrupt my lectures. However, there were so many hardworking and diligent students who was motivated me to strive for excellence in my teaching. Especially among them was Jacob, a shy looking student but very proactive in his studies. Jacob often stayed after class to meet with me and ask for help with his question. Ms. Harrison, can you help me with the calculation method for this problem? Sure, but why didn't you speak up earlier? Well, because the frisky students were bothering you earlier, I didn't want to take up any more of everyone's time. Also, I think I'm the only one who didn't understand this part. I love studying, so I have a good feeling about people who share my interest. Among them is Jacob. I went to the lecture hall as usual placed my coffee cup on the desk and sat down to prepare my presentation materials. The seats in the lecture hall quickly filled up. I stood up and began my lecture. But there seemed to be something very strange going on. Laughter was getting louder and louder. I frowned and looked down to see Jacob taking his jacket off and running down to me. He tied his jacket around my waist and pulled me outside. What are you doing, Jacob? Let go of me! Jacob pulled me straight to the restroom and then ran off somewhere. It was then that I was shocked to discover a bright red paint stain on the back of my skirt. I was bewildered about what to do when Jacob returned and stood outside knocking on the door. Miss Harrison, are you okay? Yes, I'm fine. It's just a paint stain. Someone smeared on my seat. Someone did that? But you may need these. I opened the door and Jacob turned his back, handing me a bag containing a few personal items of a girl and a pair of athletic shorts. I suddenly blushed. Let's get you into some clean clothes and I'll go report this to the administration. The, thank you. Before I could finish, Jacob quickly ran off. Afterwards, I received an announcement from the administration canceling the class to investigate the matter. I silently returned home, but it seemed like the person who wanted to harm me wasn't stopping. All four of my tires were flat. I was worried and calling for help when a motorbike pulled up next to me. Jacob took off his helmet and looked at me in surprise. Is everything okay? You look worried. Hi. <sighs> Goodness, that's not even a funny prank. I already called for help. Someone intentionally did this to provoke me. How are you going to get home now? Or do you want me to... No need. I'll just take a cab later. Let me take you home. You've helped me a lot lately. Consider it my way of thanking you. Jacob said and handed me his helmet. I reluctantly put it on and climbed onto his motorcycle. It's going to rain soon. I'll take you home quickly, Miss Harrison. Hold on tight. Jacob revved the engine and took off. He maneuvered the bike through the streets, and I clung tightly to his shoulders in panic. Stop, Jacob! We're here! The motorcycle screeched to a halt, and I lurched forward, unconsciously came to Jacob. He quickly caught me as I got off the bike, <laughs> bowed, and then took off. Wait, Jacob! You forgot to get your jacket back! I have had enough bad luck today. I thought my mood would become really bad, but no, I feel quite comfortable. Moreover, there's a strange emotion emerging within me. <laughs> Holding Jacob's jacket in my hand, Looking out the rain, I unconsciously feel worried about that young man.
It's been a few days since then, and I've been going to work as usual. Everything has returned to normal, except that I haven't seen Jacob at the lecture anymore. Could it be that he got sick from standing in the rain that day? No, he looked healthy and strong, so it's unlikely that he could get sick easily, right? Or did he encounter some other problems? I have no way to contact Jacob or ask other students about his situation, so I just kept wondering about it all day long. Good afternoon, Miss Harrison. Jacob, have you been skipping class lately? Is everything all right? This time, I approached Jacob proactively and able to conceal the worry in my face. I'm fine. I had some personal stuff that I had to deal with. I took a few days off to come and ask for some materials from you so I can study on my own. Study on your own? Then what's the point of going to college for students? What should I do now? I've missed all the important classes. Wait for me at the library after each class. I'll cut you up. Every day, a little bit. Jacob looked surprised and thanked me for leaving in a hurry. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh. From that day on, after each class on campus, Jacob would always wait for me at the library. The student was also very thoughtful, preparing drinks for me each time we met. And he even knew I like iced coffee. It was almost worth the effort I put in. Besides studying, Jacob and I often sat and chatted like two normal friends. I used to think Jacob was a shy student who only knew how to study. But the more I got to know him, the more interesting he became. Jacob had a charming and humorous way of speaking. The number of times I smiled in over 10 years of burying myself in studying was probably less than the number of times I smiled in just two months with Jacob. And then, coming to the library to tutor Jacob every day had gradually become a habit of me. Jacob also never missed any classes. I taught him knowledge, and he made me laugh at his stories. Miss Harrison, tomorrow's the weekend. Are you free? Besides going to lectures, I spent almost all my remaining time working on my research project. So I'm lucky to have two hours a day for Miss Harrison. Stop kidding around. Do you need my help with something? It's just, if you're free tomorrow, can I invite you to go see a documentary at the theater? There's a scientific documentary film showing. I was quite surprised by Jacob's invitation. I could feel my face getting warm. It's been a long time since I went to the movies. And now, moreover, I am with a boy. I wanted to decline Jacob's invitation because I felt shy, but at the same time, I didn't want to. I don't know what's happening to me. I arrived at the movie theater in a light and delicate short dress. Jacob had been waiting there for some time, although he wasn't sure if I could come or not. Jacob turned to look at me. Miss Harrison, this is the first time I've seen you without glasses and dressed like this. Is something wrong? No, nothing's wrong. You look beautiful, Susie. You can call me Susie since I'm no longer at the college. During the movie, Jacob occasionally glanced over at me and smirked. Even though I knew he meant no harm, it still <laughs> made me feel somewhat embarrassed. After the movie, we walk around the city chatting about the film we had just seen. With all of your talent and beauty, you must have found a man who's worthy of you, right? A man? Do you mean a boyfriend? I'm too shy. I'm 30 years old and I've never experienced that feeling before. Jacob looked a little surprised. I also told him about my life revolving around my studies. That night was getting colder. Jacob took off his jacket and draped it over my shoulder. Susie, it's getting cold. Let me take you home. Jacob smiled and gently took my hand. My heart was pounding like it was about to jump out of my chest. After a while, I instinctively pulled my hand back. Jacob, we're just... I know what you're going to say. I'm still immature, right? Trust me, Susie. I'll prove to you that I'm worthy. I won't make you wait any longer. That night, I tossed and turned and couldn't sleep. What did Jacob mean by those words? Did he want to... No, it couldn't be. I was already 30 years old, a PhD and a professor, while he was still my student and seven years younger than me. Moreover, if these things were known by the college, it would have a negative impact on my academic career. Absolutely not. But what was this feeling of excitement and hope? I just couldn't understand. The support time of the college is also coming to an end. I was temporarily pausing tutoring Jacob to focus on teaching in the classroom. 
helping students prepare best before entering the upcoming end-of-term exams. My efforts over the past time have yielded positive results and the academic performance of students has improved significantly. I also received many compliments from Professor Kennedy and the administration. Gradually, the gossip has disappeared, leaving only trusting and respectful looks wherever I appear. As for Jacob, although he was no longer tutored by me, he still studied seriously, even more diligently than before. Miss Harrison, I have something to say. Can you meet me at the Lake Behind the Campus a little bit later? Why should I do that? You should just adjust your attitude or I'll have to fail you right before the examination. I say no more. You just check your email and then consider my proposal. When Betty left, I opened my phone. I saw an email with a picture attached. When I opened it, I was shocked beyond belief. There were a few pictures of me and Jacob together, and they were very misleading. I heard Lee to meet Betty, hoping she wouldn't do anything too extreme. I walked down the small path to the lake on campus, and then I heard a few guys talking. I was about to turn back, but then I recognized a familiar voice. It made me stick around to listen. You guys, let's just call it. I've lost already. I don't want anything to do with these stupid games anymore. Lose? What the heck are you talking about, Jacob? Don't you know? You're our role model, huh? You've not only won, but you've won decisively. With a little more effort, you can make love with Miss Harrison. <laughs> Shut your mouth and stop talking nonsense. You guys should stop following me. I wouldn't have accepted this bet if I knew it was going to be like this. No one forced you to do anything. The bet about seducing Susie Harrison in two months? It was your idea. Here's the $200 for you. But if you have any rare material like a intimate moments with that beautiful Dr. Harrison, just let us know. We'll pay a high price for sure. <laughs> you guys better leave now and never mention this again. Especially if you guys dare to bother Susie. Don't blame me. Okay, okay, we get it. We're just joking. No need to get so serious. I was stunned. I couldn't believe what I just heard. These students were betting on me. With Jacob, the person I had trusted all this time. Suddenly, Betty appeared behind me. What about now, Miss Harrison? I'm sure that you already know the truth, right? Hmm, I don't know what everyone will think when they found out a PhD. A professor like you is having an affair with her student. Maybe the college won't accept this happening either. What do you want? <laughs> I won't beat around the bush anymore. To prevent these close photos between you and Jacob from reaching the college's hands, there are two conditions that must be met. First, I want to pass this course with an A. Second, you must stay away from Jacob. He belongs to me. Jacob suddenly emerged from behind the wall and was horrified to see me. Susie, why, why are you here? I lowered my head and turned to run away. The next day, I tried to make my way to class. I ignored Betty and did everything I could to avoid Jacob. After a few days, rumors between Jacob and I spread throughout the college, probably because I didn't meet Betty's demands. When I appeared, the respectful looks and greetings were replaced by sneers and gossip. I quickly ended class and returned home like a lost soul. Calls and messages from Jacob were constantly sent to me, but I turned off my phone and buried my head in my pillow. During these days, I confined myself to my room. Jacob always came to stand in front of my house, but I didn't care. All I wanted to do at this point was to forget everything that had just happened. If only I had never come to this college. If only I had never met Jacob. I cried. So <laughs> this is what pain feels like. It was both sad and disappointing. All beliefs and hopes suddenly collapsed. I was wrong to forget my own position and let those strange emotions dominate. I deserve to suffer all this pain. I requested the administration of XXX College to allow me to end the teaching support program early. I also met with Professor Kennedy to explain everything, hoping that she could understand and help me take over the teaching duties for the subject I am leaving behind. I packed up my things and drove home with my parents, the only ones who unconditionally love me. Back to studying, the sole purpose of life. When passing by the school gate, I slowed down and looked back. 
feeling a sudden surge of regret in my heart. Jacob suddenly appeared on his motorbike and blocked the front of my car. Susie! Susie! Just hear me out! I sat silently in the car, looking out. Susie, I'm really sorry. Please, give me a chance, just once. Can you hear me explain? At first, I approached you with the bet in mind, but I gradually forgot about that when I was near you all this time. All my feelings now are real. I looked coldly at Jacob, tears falling involuntarily from my eyes. Jacob is crying too. I turned my face away, quickly turned the searing wheel and pressed the accelerator, speeding away. Jacob continued to scream behind me. Susie! I was wrong. I will definitely become more mature. I'll definitely be worthy of you. You must wait for me, Susie. I love you. I love you very much. My eyes blurred, and I couldn't stop the tears from flowing. I stopped the car and held Jacob's shirt still tightly in my hand, crying uncontrollably. All the pain I'm feeling now started from this shirt, from the moment Jacob put it on in me, from the moment he pulled me out of class, from the moment he broke down all the barriers and entered my life. And yet, I still couldn't bear to return his jacket. Forget everything, not even a bit.